Question number 12 is another beautiful question that has been framed from the topic waves and Doppler's effect and the concept of beat is very beautifully put up here. There are two sources M and N producing frequency 118 hertz and 121 hertz. They are separated by 20 meter. Q is the midpoint. P and R are two points 1800 meter apart. And there is a car which is moving from P towards R with a speed 60 km per hour. And new P is not the frequency, in fact that has to be understood, it has been termed as beat at P. So likewise new Q would be beat at Q and new R would be beat at R. So new is not the apparent frequency, it's a beat. So based on that, even the speed of sound is given, we need to calculate all these things. So it's all calculation about the beats. So I need some space here. So what I do is say, this is the situation. Like here, one frequency is F1, other frequency is F2, let's say. Well, F2 being greater than F1. And let me call this angle as theta. Now here you would see, this is the speed of car, so let's denote it by V. Now what would be the beat frequency detected by the car in the upper zone? It would be the frequency detected by this minus frequency detected by this. So the symmetry would be the same. So what would be the frequency detected by the car, the frequency F2 perceived by the car, let's try to see. This would be pi by 2 minus theta, so that would be F2, V plus V sin theta, or let's say, by V, that has to be V and VC, let me write, so as to indicate the speed of car, V is the speed of sound. So VC, not to confuse. This is the frequency detected by the car, the original of which is F2. In other words, the frequency F2 is perceived by the car in this magnitude. Likewise, frequency F1 would be perceived by the car in magnitude F1, V plus Vc sine theta divided by V. Now, the difference of that would be the beat frequency. And you can just see that comes out to be F2, you could see that F2 is 121 or we can take it in a very simple way that would be V plus Vc sine theta by V into F2 minus F1 and that's going to be 3. So that would be the beat frequency detected when the car is in the upper half. Similarly, when the car is in the lower half, so the beat frequency detected would be something like this by the same logic. Now, for the first thing, it's very clear that nu p plus nu r would be equals to 2 nu q. That would be very properly seen. Because see, when you are at the upper half, nu p, you have to put the value of sine theta, but that requirement is not there. Because see, this plus this, that would exactly give the beat frequency at this. So you can easily verify option number B would be correct. Even option number A seems to be correct in a very nice way. It says rate of change in beat frequency. So let's see, this is the beat. Now rate of change of beat frequency, that will be d nu by dt, that's a rate. And this comes out to be 3 by v into vc cos theta d theta by dt. What I did is that I simply differentiated this. This was the beat frequency detected as a function of position and this is the case. Now there are two variables which is cos theta and d theta by dt. And luckily when the observer or detector passes here both cos theta and d theta by dt would be maximum. You could easily see cos theta would be maximum because theta would be zero. Likewise, d theta by dt would also be maximum here because try and understand d theta by dt is the angular velocity of this car about this point. 
Now you could see that the speed is same and the distance would be minimum when it is here. So even d theta by dt angular velocity with respect to this point is maximum when the car reaches here. So quite an interesting thing we did not go and we need not go with some higher mathematics here because cos theta and d theta by dt are simultaneously maximum at this particular point. So a option would be correct. And likewise, in the same token, you could see option number D, this is how the beat frequency varies. That's a very easy variation you could see. And this particular question now will have three options as the correct, A, B, and D. So that was question number 12. Now we'll go to question number 13. Question number 13 is from modern physics and slightly deviated question, not usual one that you find in book. Highly excited states for hydrogen like atoms have n very very much greater than 1. So right here when n is very very large the orbitals can be taken as continuous because the gap between them would be very very less. So in that particular way relative change in radii of two consecutive orbitals does not depend on z. So at that particular stage you see that r is r naught n square by z. Now we got to see the relative change in radii, in other word delta r by r, but since things can be assumed to be continuous at that higher domain, I can go with the derivative. So for a single atom you see that these things would be constant and you see 1 by r dr would be 2 1 by n dn. Now this is the relative change in radius and you could see that that's not depending on z so the first option is correct and that's inversely proportional to n even that's fine. Now let's talk with the energy. When you talk with energy you see that energy is minus 13.6 z square by n square or log e would be log k minus 2 log n and 1 by e dE would be minus 2 by n dN. Now you could see that the relative change in energy is inversely proportional to n while the question says inversely proportional to n cube so that would be incorrect. And finally angular momentum you know that angular momentum is nH by 2 pi so you'll have log L is log k plus log n and 1 by l dl would be 1 by n dn and that is now giving us the correct option. So this particular question, question number 13 has correct option as a, b and d. Alright, now let's move to question number 14. With that we would enter into another section, section 3.